We learned that if a donkey gives birth to a firstborn male, you have to redeem it. How do you redeem it? You give the kayin the value of the donkey, or there's a better way. You could give the kayin a seh. Even if the seh is worth less than the donkey, it's a good redemption. What is a seh? Seh is either a sheep or a goat, a male or a female. Now, it could be a balmum as well. The mission is going to describe a lot of cases where the owner has a doubt whether he has to give a pidgin or not, and he sets aside a seh for himself. That seh, says the Mishnah, has a halacha as, as all his other sheep, and therefore he has to give miser from it and with it. So you put it into the barn, and as they walk out, you count ten, and it's as if it's not a petr hamar at all. But if it is a good seh, a good petr hamar, and then it dies, the coin has the right to use it after its death. What happens if your animal gave birth to twins? One was a female, one was a male. You don't know if the male came out first or second. Do you have to redeem it? So according to Rabbi Yehuda, you're not allowed to use the Bechar. It's also Bahana. And therefore, you have to set aside a se, you have to set aside a sheep or a goat. You could use it for yourself. You don't have to give it to the Kayim. But that setting aside is mafkia. It removes the Gdusha of the Bechaira and it allows you to use your donkey without a problem. So according to Rabbi Shimon, you don't have to do it because, according to Rabbi Shimon, there's no Isra Hanna. According to Chachamim, if a uh, donkey gave birth to two males, there's a, we have to be worried that perhaps she gave birth to both of them simultaneously. Now there's the famous question in the Gemara, if Efshel Tzamtzim or Efshel Tzamtzim, is it possible that one occurrence happened simultaneously. Is it possible that the two heads came out at the exact moment? According to Chachamim, Samsim, so we don't have to worry that it happened together, and therefore there's only one Bechar, you set aside one Seh. The Gemara just says there, Chagav, that according to Chachamim, why are you Chayv at all? If the two heads came out together, it would seem that you'd be Chayv, if it was Efshel Samsim, you'd be Chayv in two, but there's a halacha l'chayra, that you need to have the complete surrounding of the womb around the animal and if there's a, a twin there then the womb didn't surround the animal and the Gemara answers to that that since the other twin is the same exact min as the other one then it doesn't cause a problem with chatzitza that's Derech Agav according to Rabbi Yosei Aglili that says Eshel Tzamtzim so L'Chaira you would need to put aside according to Rashi two says because maybe they were both born simultaneously Taisa says it's so uncommon that two would be born the same exact second, therefore Jesus learns you put one sheep you give to the kayin and one you put aside for yourself and you get to use it yourself. <coughs> Abayah says, and the Gemara says it's not true, but Abayah holds that this concept of being born together and being chayav on two is only by a kosher animal because it says has kharim, the Gemara proves him wrong because Rebbe Yisakli says specifically by a hamar, by a non-kosher animal, the same halacha, that there's a problem when they're both born simultaneously. If two donkeys who never gave birth gave birth to two males, obviously you chayev in two. If they gave birth to a male and a female, you only chayev one. What happens if they gave birth to three animals, two males and one female? Perhaps the female is born first. One, he's definitely chayev to, to redeem. But on the second one, we have the same suffolk as we had in the beginning of the mission, and therefore he sets aside a set according to Rabbi Huda and according to Rabbi Shimon, he doesn't have to set aside anything. If they gave birth to two males and two females. Maybe there's no Bechar at all. Maybe the two females were born first. So therefore, you'd set aside two says for yourself, according to Rabbi Yudah, and you get to use them. If you have two animals, one gave birth prior to this, and one never gave birth, and they gave birth to two males, then you have one. If they gave birth to a male and a female, perhaps the one who never gave birth gave birth to a female, and the same halacha applies, you set aside Aseh for that one. Now, are you allowed or not allowed to use a donkey before you redeem it? According to Rabbi Yehuda, it's Aser Bahana, and you're not allowed to use it, and the, but you could be Makadish a woman with the donkey. Just like he says that you're allowed to be Makadish a woman with Maiser Shani. Maiser Shani you have to bring to Yerushalayim. Before you brought it to Yerushalayim to eat, you gave it to a woman. The reason is because he says that a woman knows you're not allowed to eat it, and therefore she'll redeem it, but she has a Hanah, she got it for cheap. 
And the same thing by Petr Hamar. You give a woman the donkey, she knows she has to redeem it. So let's say a donkey is worth $500. She'll take a sheep that's worth $200, give it to the coin. Now the donkey is hers. She's left with $300 value. And with that, she's miskadish. Reb Shimon holds that you're allowed to benefit from a donkey before. And the reason is because we don't find anywhere in the Torah that something that is a mutter for the coin to, to use without being makriv should have some sort of iser beforehand. And Shemitah food that you do have to redeem, the, that redemption remains on the food forever. Interesting halacha. So if you redeem your apples and you redeem it for meat, the meat becomes usher. Then you take the meat and you redeem it for fish, the fish becomes usher, and so on and so forth. The last thing always remains usher. There's machlekes, what we learn from the words, According to everybody, Shayrecha comes to say that you're allowed to use a human Bechar. You're allowed to enjoy and benefit his work. The question is, what do we do with the Tzinecha? So according to Rabbi Yehuda, who holds that a partnership of a guy doesn't absolve you from Petr Hamar and you're responsible for your share, so the Tzinecha comes to say, yes, but Giza Vavayda, the shearing and the work of the Petr Hamar, you're allowed to benefit completely. According to Rabbi Shimon, that says that a guy doesn't have any, you are a partner with a guy, you don't have to give any Petr Hamar, so certainly you could do Giza Vavayda. So what does Tzinecha come to tell you? Tzinecha comes to tell you that if you own the Petr Hamar completely by yourself, you're allowed to benefit from the donkey. Now, what happens if you have, there's a list of seven types of foods that are Asr Bahana. The question is, are they Mechabal Tumor or not? What's the list? Arla, Klea Kerem, Shor Haniskal, after you shechted, after it had already a din, Egla Rufa, after it went into Nachal Eson and became Asr, the birds of a Mitzayra, Petr Hamar, after you cut off its head, and Basr Bechalav. So according to Behuda, all these are considered food, and that's why they become Tomei. But according to Reb Shimon, none of them become Tomei, besides Basu Bechalav. Why? Because it says, that it has to be something that you're able to even give off to a guy to feed somebody else. And since all these are Osvana, it's not considered food at all. Besides Basu Bechalav, that had a Shasa Heta. That once upon a time, the milk was mutter, and the meat was mutter, it only became also when you put them together. What about birds? They were never mutter because it's before shechita, and after shechita it was already a metzayra bird or the eglarufa, etc. And with that, we will finish today's shir. I'll see you.